-hmm. has blinded folk. Yes. Why does he want to blind folk? Because he don't want folk to see the gospel. Amen. Right. Right. There's an attack on the traditional home. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 And, and that attack is, is being fed fodder from some of us. Mm. Well, amen. Amen, amen. amen. Like I said, you might have to duck the turtle. Amen. Might get a little turtle. But there are some things that we engage in as Christians that foster or build the attack on God's word. Right. It's, it's like the text in Hebrews chapter 10, where the Hebrew writer says that some of us will be turncoats. Huh. <coughs> well, we will start off fighting for the faith, end up fighting against the faith. Y'all yeah. Yeah. And, and it's almost like the devil is utilizing some of us as a Trojan horse. Mm -hmm. Y'all well, yeah. remember a Trojan horse? Yeah. Where the enemy would hide inside this makeshift looking horse. Yeah. Yeah. And then they would bring it in as a gift. Yeah. And then once it's comfortably inside the camp, doors open and chaos breaks through. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Sometimes in our society, the church is weaponized against the church. Yeah. And I want to talk to you today, so I might be mild-mannered for a little while, amen. Don't worry, we got a little bit of shouting in there too. Uh, but I, I want you to hear me clearly today. And I want to be as precise and concise as I can. So to alleviate some pressure, there's no Bible class. All right. So I ain't got to watch the clock. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Uh, I, I want you, but I don't want you to just use this time to go home and do nothing. Amen. I want you to do two things. What? Study your word and honor your father. Amen. 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 Uh, and, and you might say, but Brother Bradley, me and that joker don't get along. Well, that's fine. I still give him some grace. Amen. Because the same God that gave you grace yeah. has given him grace. Amen. 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 And, and none of us fathers are perfect. No. Uh, I, I, I've had to tell Aaron, uh, I apologize. Because yeah. there were things I learned, <coughs> Tyler, Nicholas, and Christina, that I didn't deploy with him. Yeah. When you have more children, you learn different. Amen, Amen somebody. What do parents say? Somebody support a preacher. Amen, somebody. <laughs> Don't leave me out there by myself like the only parent that had to say I'm sorry. <laughs> well, well maybe, maybe I am. Maybe some of us need to say I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, <brother. laughs> those who are willing, those who are capable, those who don't mind, please stand for the reading of God's word. We're going to pray for the text and pray in the text. Amen. Amen. The Bible says you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost his savior. Wherewith shall it be sought? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. You may be seated in the presence and the power of the Lord. From underneath our banner for the month of June, I'm proud to be a Christian. Allow me a few moments of your time to speak from the subject when the influencer has been influenced. Yeah. When the influencer has been influenced. Right. I want to give you three takeaways, three learning points today. The role of Christian influencers. When the influencer has been influenced. And then third, reclaiming our influence. All right. I have come to the conclusion that many Christians do not realize God has delivered you, rescued you, and is transforming you with a purpose. Yeah. The purpose is not for you to only receive blessings. Because sadly, many Christians tie their faith into what I get back from God. Y'all right. still on that? Yes. However, God wants more 
than for you to be a receiver of blessings. He actually wants you to be a blessing to somebody else. He wants you to be a conduit, if you will, to touch lives of other people. And when that does not happen, society drifts further away from what God wanted it to be. Without taking you through a history lesson of Israel, when God rescued them out of Egypt, and after they wandered around Mount Seir, out of stupidity, disobedience, and ignorance, they finally turned left and went north. Why did they go north? Because there was a territory promised to their forefathers by God. And when they came to this territory, it was inhabited by people who was not willingly going to give it away. Y'all still on that? So God worked through Israel to fight off all the inhabitants that had their promised land so he could put them in this territory. In Isaiah chapter 5, God talks about I cleared out weeds and stones. If you follow the history of Israel, they went through many wars to clean Jerusalem as their own. God fought through them, with them, and around them so that they could take a land that was fertile, as the Bible says, with running with milk and honey. Yeah. And when all had been said and done and the dust began to clear, God expected Israel to turn around and be a city that shined bright on a hill. Somebody catch the door. Somebody try to cut me. This city that is shining brightly on a hill instead of shining bright like a diamond began to lose its ever loving mind. They began to practice and participate in things. God Y'all all right with this short history lesson? Yes, and in doing so, because they chose to live contrary to God's word, God then allowed the consequences to not only terrorize them, but also their neighboring countries. Are y'all still alive? Come fast forward to the present time. Israel is under the siege of Rome. They have no real authority because they're under the thumb of Pontius Pilate. Y'all still on that? Jesus comes along and begins to tell those Israelites who are there that you are the salt of the earth. The purpose is you're supposed to bring flavor where there is no flavor. Anybody sit on down with me? They were supposed to influence people around them to trust in God like they did. It's a problem we have today. Many Christians do not realize that they have the role of being an influencer in this day and age. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's unpack a definition. Influence. The ability to have a positive or negative effect on another's character, their thought process, or their behavior. Mm -hmm. I think all of us at one time can say we were influenced by somebody. Yeah. Yeah. You might not want to admit it. Give me one more side. I'm going to prove it to you. 
When the person has a certain hold on your mindset, they are able to convince you to either think differently or, in this day and age, box up. Come on, wait, where y'all at? Where y'all at? How, how many of you TikTok shoppers here are like me? <laughs> I bought a I bought a cologne because I saw too many videos of people saying this cologne is gonna drive the women crazy. <laughs> now don't 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 y'all go out there talking about I preach out there hurting women, all right? Somebody might be asking, Brother Bradley, how do we know your behavior has changed? Before 2023, I did not have a lot of colognes on my shelf. Now, you heard my wife, she just said, but you come up in that monkey now. It's like you walked in the Macy's. I got coffee beans and blank paper. Sometimes we don't like to admit we've been influenced by somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Amen, somebody? Yeah. Oh, my picture ain't short. Oh, I have mercy. All right, maybe that's copyright protected. They won't let me have it. But, <laughs> but you see some of the pictures up there. How, how many of you have been influenced by Boo Boo? Where, where are you Apple people at? Come on. How about the McDonald's? Nike. Stop. When the person in the movie, the character in the movie picks up a drink, come on, you get thirsty, and now because they drinking a Coke, come on, come on, think about how many of us grew up in households where many of these black figures were instrumental in our should have an impact like these influences on your screen. If you don't believe so, give me a few more minutes of your time. God did not bring you here just so you could enjoy the blessing of making heaven your home by yourself. If I had time, I would, I would help you parse a particular part of text when I got some time today. If Jesus said in John 14 and verse number 1, he said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me, in my Father's house. Singular in nature. Are many mansions. Meaning, there's more than just yours. And anybody said all right? And, and, and here's where we're running into a conundrum. Many times we as Christians don't realize we are God's ambassadors. We represent him in a foreign country. Paul says it. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 20. He says, therefore we are ambassadors for Christ. 
And in case somebody's thinking, oh, Brother Bradley, no, that's just for the preachers and the elders and deacons. You, you find yourself in verse 21. Did this happen for you? For our sake. He made him to be sin who knew no sin. So that in him, we, who's the we in the context? Every born again believer, every baptized member of the church of Christ is included in the we. And if you're in the we, then you're included in the we in verse 12. We are ambassadors. Amen. Brings me to my first point. Got here kind of quick, didn't it? Don't worry. The second point will take the problem. The role of Christian influences. How many of you believe you should be influencing somebody to follow Christ? Amen. Amen. You should be playing a role in somebody else coming to Christ. Oh, Brother Bradley, I can't teach the Bible like you can. That ain't what God is asking you to do. Yeah. All right. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 says he gave some. Yeah. Meaning he didn't give it to everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all still online? Yeah. Yeah. But what did he give all of us? He gave every last one of us the gospel. Yeah. The good news, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. All of us have the message that Jesus died, that he was buried, that he rose again. We all have that message. Yeah. And what are we to do with that? Look at number one. You ought to connect with the community. Connect the community to Christ through our love. Amen. How else can the world you're living in change if people can't see Christ living in you? Amen. There can't be a conflict. Amen, somebody? Amen. You can't decide when you're salt or when you're pepper. God didn't make you to be pepper. He made you to be salt. All right. This is why he said, look at your Bible. Y'all right? Little Bible study right now. Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. He says, ye plural are the salt of the earth. Earth in this context has nothing to do with the firmament in which you walk on. It has everything to do with the people in your personal community. Okay. How many of us have a personal community? Other than doing a week. Yes. We really generally don't see each other during the week. Yes. Which means our individual communities rarely, if ever, come together. Amen. What does that mean? It means you are going to be the only Jesus people get until they get to the Lord's house. So since you're in that circle, God wants you to bring flavor to that circle. Is that all right? The second thing is, when you are a Christian influencer, you shape opinions of the community through your commitment and consistency in the faith. You know why marriage is an issue now? You know why there are more babies than there are marriages happening? Well, well, well. And I say, you have a duck, right? Because there are too many of us fathering children yeah. with folk who are not our wives. Yeah. Well, well. Amen. Yeah. And then we still come to worship like ain't nothing wrong. Uh -oh. Come on, man. Uh -oh. <laughs> Well, it ain't just old father and children. Some of us men have not been godly men. Amen. We've been players, fornicators, robbers, liars, but on Sunday we want to leave scripture. What does it do? It confuses the society around you. Because you're supposed to be salt, but you're adding the wrong faith. You know why the community is changing so much? Because too many of us as Christians are putting our faith in a closet so we can appease the community. Amen, somebody. 
We'd rather the community get along with us than the community connected with Christ. Watch the text. I ain't preaching nothing but ain't in your Bible. He says, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salt? It is therefore good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. Oh, y'all wait till we pull that verse apart. Watch verse 14. He says, you are the what? You're the what? So if you're the light of the world, wherein then is the world? In darkness. How can the world find their way in relationships, in mental health, in spiritual wellness if the light has put a lampshade on? You can't change nobody in your house if you're a fraudulent Christian. All right. And then third, you're supposed to convert the community to Christ. Mm -hmm. All of us are supposed to be soul winners. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But Brother Brandon, I, don't, I, I can't be like you. I can't just walk around and Bible verses pop out my mouth. Yeah. You realize God ain't, there ain't no scripture. Well, all right, I take that. <laughs> Strike that. There are a few scriptures that tell you. Uh, Psalm number one and verse number two, the Bible says meditate upon his law both day and night means you have to have a form of recollection, which means you memorize scripture. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. I was about to say there's no scripture that tells you you got to remember scripture, but then you know, about like, oh, hold on, wait a minute. <laughs> but you realize, you know, you don't have to be the type of person who can say, well, the Bible says in John 5, verse 4. Because you know, sometimes some of the best sermons are going to be just how you did it. Amen. 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 We're, we're in a society now, everybody's Googling the Bible. Amen. Huh? And y'all on TikTok with me? I'm on, I'm on the dark side of TikTok. Yeah, I, when I open my TikTok, I get videos, God ain't real. Uh, Hebrew Israelitism. Yeah, oh, and my wife want to take my phone. I'll be trying to get my 200 characters in. <laughs> but you realize all these other influences are taking the word of God and rotating it so it fits a narrative they want so that they can either disprove God ain't real or show us that we're under the wrong faith. specialize in apologetics are folk who keep their mindset in a particular frame to defend the gospel both historically, linguistically, as well as culturally. Amen. Amen. Go ahead. But all God is asking you to do, live right. Amen. 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 He's asking you, everybody, live right. Watch this. Our salt, the Christian's impact, we should have an influence in our families. Amen. 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 If not your family, then at least your community. Yeah. Yeah. How many of you people have jobs where folk around you treat you different because you're a Christian? Yeah. 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 If it's not known, they won't treat you a certain way. Yeah. And look what Jesus does. Y'all ready to ride? Y'all pray right here. Stop praying. Pray that, pray that everything I study, that all of it don't come back. <laughs> all right? At least half. We want at least half. But we don't want it all. Because we'll be here at midnight. Amen? Because I'm going to show you the value of salt. Because a lot of times when you hear salt, one of the things we think of either seasoning our food or using it as a preservative. Yeah. 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 Right? Yeah. Yeah. Today, I want to give you a little something different about salt. Y'all right? right. right? Notice your text again. Jesus says, you are the salt of the earth. Yeah. In a Levitical sense, and you might need your Bible today, right? If, if not, I hope you download it. The uh, 
PowerPoint. Leviticus 2 and verse 13. In Leviticus 2 and verse 13, salt is utilized to share the thought about the beauty of entering into a covenant with God. Salt serves as a reminder that this covenant is a good covenant <coughs> between God and Israel. Brother Eric, you ready to write? Yes, sir. In Leviticus chapter 2, in verse 13, I want you to listen to what God says to his people concerning Saul. Because what Jesus is about to do, what Jesus is doing in Matthew 5, 13, he is touching the mind of the Jewish person. Because the Jew understood salt was more than flavoring your food. It had a greater symbolic meaning to them. Listen at your, your Bible. Leviticus chapter 2. Your Bible says, And every oblation, and every oblation of thy meat offering uh -huh. shall thou season mm -hmm. with salt. Watch this. Every offering that the priests were offering had to have salt. Salt was seen as not only a preservative, but also part of the purification process. Come on, come on. Can't you see it? You see why God wants you to be salt in the earth? He wants to utilize you as part of the purification process in the new covenant established by Christ. He wants you to touch people's lives that instead of them being stained you become part of the reason why they become pure. Yeah. How do I know? Because in Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 6, the Hebrew writer talks about how we have entered into a better covenant. Yeah. Christians ought to be glad that you are in a better covenant. Yeah. Somebody might say, why should we be glad? can share in the best covenant God has ever made. Amen. And now, Jesus is saying, I need you to be soft. I need you to bring flavor to a person's life so that I can spiritually detox them. Amen. Amen. Are you alright? Because without detoxing, you will still carry And unless there is a cleaning, you maintain. That's right. Y'all might not be seeing me right now. Why do you think society is going the way it's going? Because as a Christian, it should bother you. If it doesn't bother you, then maybe you aren't the influencer God intended for you to be. Oh, I'm about to touch that in a minute, too. Y'all right? Yeah. Let me show you another aspect of salt. Salt is used as an antiseptic mm -hmm. as well as skin treatment, but also a form of dedication. Uh -huh. Oh, stay on the line. Come on, somebody meet me in Ezekiel chapter 16 and verse 4. Watch this. How, how many of you realize when you were swaddling your little babies, you were actually doing something that those of the Old Testament did as part of a dedication to God. Mm. <laughs> Ain't God good? Amen. Watch the text, brother Eric, you ready to ride? Yes, sir. The Bible says in Ezekiel 16 and verse 4. And as for thy nativity, uh-huh, in the day. 
thou wast born. Listen to the text. Thy navel was not cut. Neither thou washed in water to supper me. Oh. Read. Thou wast not salted at all. Nor swallowed at all. Pause. That's good. What do you recognize in the text? The text says that the umbilical cord is not cut. Y'all online? Yeah. And that the newborn has not been washed. Yeah. You still see, you see it there? Yeah. And he says, you have not been salted. Yeah. Neither were you swallowed. Yeah. We in the text? Yeah. Each area is presented as a form of Israel being dedicated to God. What would salt do to an open wound? Ha! It's going to sting, but it's also going to become an antiseptic to relieve all oh, sweet Jesus, to relieve pain that is caused from being cut. Christians are to be salt to people Yeah. 
Oh, I need you to see this. He killed everybody in the city. But then sold salt. So nothing would grow. Can't you hear Paul? In Colossians chapter 3 verse 5. Huh? Mortify therefore your members. With all upon the earth. Are y'all alive? Put these things to death. And then what do I got to do? With the dead. I got to make sure they don't grow again. How many of us. Have become an influence. In other people's lives. Who knew the old you. But now they see the new you. But you still got old things. Growing in your life. It's impossible. To be a good I'm getting hungry too. I want some ribs. Lord have mercy. Come on, somebody, somebody meet me in Jude. Jude is only one chapter, right next to Revelation. Y'all got it? Uh huh. Just listen at your Bible. I, I, I got, I got it, brother. I got it. He says, "But, but you, beloved, building yourselves up in the most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit." Watch the text, verse twenty-one. Keep yourselves where. Waiting for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ yeah. that what? Leads to eternal life. Yeah. Have mercy on those who die. Yeah. Verse 23. Save others by what? Yeah. Come on, come on. Let me see if I can paint somebody a picture of being snatched. Yeah. We, done, we done changed the definition of snatched to me now you got an hourglass figure. <laughs> y'all well, looking at me strange. Huh? Those spanks. <laughs> For men and women. I ain't got like the sisters wear. Men got them too. Yeah. I just saw a guy put on a t-shirt make it look like you got a six pack. <laughs> In a 200 territory like me. I'm like bro ain't no way B-boys getting six packs. <laughs> but snatched. I'm trying to find somebody. Big Mama ass snatch you? Oh yeah. Uh, Big Mama ass snatch you? Your momentum going one way? Uh, come on. And all of a sudden, the whole geography changed for you. Forward movement was no longer existing. And you were now heading backwards because you got snatched. I'm trying to paint a clear picture to you. How many of us? are doing that to the people in our community. Mm -hmm. Living in such a way that it causes them to go backwards from the direction where they were headed. Mm -hmm. The text is snatching them from what? Ah! Huh? That's the text, right? Snatching them out of the fire means they've already been in it. Yeah. Yeah. Are you living a life in a way that pulls people up out of the fire? If you have it, then you, you're, you're, you're saltless. Yes. Oh, stay, oh, don't duck, don't duck, don't duck now, don't duck now, don't duck now. Here, let me give you one more. Salt is a purifier. Huh? Meet me in 2 Kings. I want you to see this. I want you to see this. I, I was shouting when I read it. Huh? And I, I, I don't know about y'all, but, but certain things in the Bible just, just sends me, you know, to certain places. Y'all right? Yes. And, and when, when, I, when I start un, un, unpacking things and I start reading with greater intensity, it, 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 it produces within me, oh, you, you, you got to live better. Yes. Let me share with you. There, there, there's a reason why I have no problem loving my wife openly. Mm. That ain't just for me. And for my sons and daughters to realize what it looks like to have love in relationships. Amen. And I'm pretty sure they, they have heard us at times having business meetings. <laughs> you know what? Y'all fix your mind. You know, y'all been in some Church of Christ business meetings yeah. where it has been contentious, yeah. arguing. Yeah. I think the chair should be purple. No, they should be red. I, If you can be loud and wrong in front of them, 
you can be right and tight in front of them also. It's about giving people good examples. Amen. Your faith, my faith is about giving people good examples about what God is doing in their life to attract them to God. Amen. Oh, watch your Bible. Second Kings. Second Kings chapter 2 and verse 19. The Bible says, now the men of the city said to Elisha, Behold, the situation of this city is, is pleasant, as my Lord sees. But the water is bad. And the land is unfruitful. Oh, can I touch your mind for a moment? I'm one of those people that believe America is the greatest country to live in. We have everything we basically need right here. Amen. But the water. The water is bad. Everybody in America do not walk ethically or morally in high standards. Amen, somebody. That's why you have to have police now. Now, we can argue about the inception of police from a racial position. But there's a reason why now we need police. Because everybody do not live with standards of ethics and morals. Y'all know what I mean? Yeah. We're in the same position some people were. They would say, Elijah, you can see that this city is good. But the water is bitter. And the land is unproductive. Oh, y'all, are y'all in the text with me? Yeah. Watch the response. He said, verse 20, bring me a new bowl and put salt in it. Well, Have y'all noticed that every verse that we went to away from Matthew 5 has the word salt? Yeah. Here, once again, salt is being used. Salt in a new bowl. Salt in a new bowl. Watch what happens. Then he went to the spring of water and threw salt in it and said, Thus says the Lord, I have healed this water. From now on, neither death nor miscarriage shall come from it. You know what was happening with the phrase miscarriage? I don't have to go there, right? Amen. And we'll keep that because I know that little folk here and I ain't trying to send parents home having to discover or share what that is. Verse 22. So the water has been healed to this day according to the word that Elijah spoke. What was the healing part? When he put the new bowl with salt in the water. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the result was the water went from bitter to sweet. And then there were healthy deliverance. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I don't know if folks see me yet. Yeah. Huh? The bowl is you. You've got to be the bowl. Notice what he said. A new bowl. Why a new bowl? Because the old bowl is tainted. Yeah. 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 17. Paul says, if any man be in Christ, he is a what? New creation. Old things have what? Been passed away. Behold, all things have become new. That's the new bowl. You and I a new bowl. Amen. And God said, Elijah said, put some salt in that bowl. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. What's in your bowl? Mm. Yeah. Huh? Y'all heard the commercial, what's in your wallet? Yeah. <laughs> what's, what's in your bowl? Huh? What kind of flavor? What kind of flavor are you 
you bringing to your community? Right? Because is it, is it causing change in your home? Is it causing change amongst your friends? Are your friends being healed because of your faith? Oh, come on, come on. Are, are, are their relationships changing because you're their influencer? Or have you been influenced? Oh, come back to Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. Yeah, can I have 10 minutes? Where am I at? I'm at 45 minutes. What time I got up here? It don't matter. Let's preach it. Right? Watch the text. He says, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salty? Watch the text. It is thenceforth good, good, good. What did Jesus just tell us? If your salt, your life, does not bring flavor to another person's life, Jesus is saying, He uses a phrase, lost flavor. Do you know how impossible it is for salt to lose its flavor? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It is virtually impossible. You have to water it down so much that it dilutes the salt yes. till it's virtually tasteless yeah. in the water. Are, are you online? Yeah. And what Jesus is saying you have no impact on a person's life that they can't even see faith in you. Amen. And he says, because of that, what's the text? He says, you are good for nothing. This is why Jesus says, he says, you are neither hot nor cold. I'm a, I'm a what? Spew, regurgitate you. And then watch. He says, not only that, he says, try me. There are too many Christians who are living lives where the world is just running them over. Somebody might be living delusionally and saying, I, I, I'm salt, I'm salty. <laughs> But I beg the difference. Some might be unsalty salt. <laughs> huh? Let me see if I can find you. Come on, Are you lowering your values to appease your community? Are you being conformed to this world instead of having the world around you conform to Christ? Amen. Your life choices. Yes. Do they include more worldly thoughts than godly wisdom? Uh -huh. When you make choices and decisions, does God Included in your plans. Three. You have greater dedication to your social life than your spiritual life. If so, you have been influenced. Number four. If you fear to share your faith, but are fearless in compromising your faith, you have been influenced. The question is now, will you be honest enough with yourself to admit you've been Amen. How many of us Christians today are actually not living up to who God called us to be? Are you having a form of influence in your home that shifts things, that changes things, at least brings God into the question? Amen. Brother Bradley, how, 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 do I, how do I regain my saltiness? Reclaim my influence. Number one, you got to refuse to compromise your faith. Yes, yes. Meet me in Psalm number one. Y'all right? Yeah. I'm landing. I promise you, it's the last slide. <laughs> Psalm number one. You you gotta you gotta refuse to compromise your faith. How how do I compromise my faith, brother Bradley? Well, well, let's let the Bible show you. Right. The Bible says in Psalm number one, blessed is the man yes. who walks, Not. who walks, Not. who walks. Not. All right, so how do I reclaim my influence? I can't walk in the counsel of the wicked. 
Matter of fact, let me let me change translation for you so so it is it'll connect with our ears better. Overjoyed from the New Living Translation of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked. All right now. That means you 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 gotta leave the TikTok advisor alone when it comes to your spirituality. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You, you got to leave Google University alone. Why is Google University bad? Because Google University normally doesn't come with somebody that will help you understand. Amen. You remember Philip and the unit? The unit had his own version of Google. He had a scroll of Isaiah in his hand. And when Philip got in the chariot, he said, he said, Philip said, do you understand what you're reading? And the eunuch said, well, how can I? Except some man should guide me. You realize when you're walking your walk of faith, you can't do it by yourself. That's right. That's right. We all need some help. Every last one of us needs somebody to help educate us in what it means to be a child of God. Second, be influential by standing out due to your faith. Too many of us want to stand out with worldly practices. Don't, don't get mad at me. Because y'all know I love you. I hope you love me too. Amen. Amen. But, but sometimes, sometimes our faith will post Say nothing but look at me. Sometimes the clothes be wet. And, I, and you know, you can, you can look at me and tell, you know, I like nice clothes. Yeah. Amen, so that? Yeah. Amen. It's the mindset yeah. that's behind me. Yeah. If the mindset has everything pointed at you, when is something pointed at God? Well, mm-hmm. This is why Jesus says you are the light of the world. Mm-hmm. The role of the Christian is to influence other people to see God. Amen. How do you help them see God? By standing on business for God. Amen. When God calls for change, don't negotiate. Because that's what we like to do. Yeah. We like to negotiate with God. Oh God, I'm going to stop cussing next month. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just, just, just let me cuss out Billy at work this last time. <laughs> you know Well, you know what? Uh, uh, how many of you had that booth there and just said, this is going to be our last time. We're going to live right for God. Mm-hmm. And y'all still meet up at 1230. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, I said <laughs> Still be having re- re- relations. <laughs> and you're not relatable because ain't no covenant. No. Oh, have mercy. Come on. <laughs> be influential by being an example of righteousness. Yeah. Be the Christian that's not afraid to be salty. Amen. <laughs> what does salty look like? Salty looks like I live by faith in the face of all that people can say or do. Don't compromise who you are <coughs> just because there are people around you Come on, that you think mean something. Come on, brother. Amen. Cause you could be in the same place they are. Yeah. Uh-huh. Amen. Amen. How, how many of you? How, how many? Where the, where, the, where, the, where the older folk? Where the Gen X at? Where y'all at? Where the boomers at? Huh? How, how many of us have made some decisions following some people well, yeah. in which we never followed them? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Now I, I know some of some of the Gen. <laughs> Z and Gen A and Millennials. I, I, I know y'all, y'all good Googlers. I ain't taking nothing from you in your Google status. I love you in your Google status because I learned from you. But there are going to be some times in life when you're going to need more than Google. Amen. Amen. There are going to be some lessons in life you can only learn from somebody who's living. 
Can I have can I have a little help over here? And I, I realize, I realize we have the clash, clash of communities in the church house. The young adult community, the middle-aged community, and the mature community. Right? The great head community. And sometimes these communities clash. You know why these communities clash? Because there are folk in all communities that fail to realize I'm going to put you before me. Because if we put each other before each other, there's greater harmony in the church house. Why do we need harmony in the church house? Well, when Jesus prayed in John 17, he prayed that we all might be one. That the world might believe. That's our, that's our purpose. That's our sole goal. Is that the world might believe. What's the byproduct? We get to heaven. So the question for you today. Who are you influenced? Or have you been influenced? This is now a point in, in a lesson now. Where you, you take this home and go reflect. Amen. I, I think I've, I've, I've given you a little bit about salt. I haven't touched it. I haven't touched salt. How often salt is utilized in the Old Testament for different reasons. Yes. But be the salt in somebody's life. Because how many of us can't have salt now? Lord have mercy. There's a few hands, right? A few hands. Food is different now. It don't have that same kick that that salt had. You try accent. You try Mrs. Dash. They don't do the same justices. Come on, come on, somebody. Because there's something about salt, the pain and the bitter that just makes things explode with euphoria. Something like that. 
Some of where it just keeps on going, you know. <laughs> but you remember that, but I can't wait to remember this stuff, bro. Right? It keeps going on and on. You realize, I, I'm, I'm landing. <laughs> How many of you have ever smelled a person's cologne or perfume and they were no, no, no longer there? They walk through your presence before you got there. They're already gone. And the aroma was still in the What aroma? What aroma do you leave in your circle that says so and so was here? Because that's influence, isn't it? Yeah. It's influence. And apparently it's a good room. Yeah. I think I smell good today. Yeah. I, I hit it with my TikTok cologne. I was, I was in it. <laughs> Y'all know, I was spraying for days. So I'm going to smell good today. I wash. I'm trying to help somebody. I wash. I took a little Vaseline and rubbed on my neck. Listen, and, and I got a hold of him. There's an aroma from my father that I can smell to this day. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what's the aroma? It's treat your family right. Yeah. Love your people. Yeah. Be good to them. Yeah. Meet them when they need you. Yeah. Don't crucify them. Love them. And that aroma just keeps on permeating my skin. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because he influenced me. To follow Jesus. Yeah. And then when Jesus is done with me, uh -huh. he turned me around and said, I hope it flew us up. Somebody asked God to church to pray for them today. Yeah. My influence is not what it should be. And I want y'all to pray for me that I can be a better influencer than I am right now. I'm going, I want to work on my character. Yeah. I want to work on who I am as a person so I can be the type of salt that brings flavor to another person's life. Right. And then there might be somebody here today who's saying, Brother Bradley, I want some flavor in my life. Right now, I don't have any flavor. I don't have Christ in my life. And I'm struggling and I'm trying, but I just, I just need to do the right thing with God so I can have flavor in my life. Yeah. Well, what's flavor, Brother Bradley? See, flavor, we often think it's blessings. Tangible blessings. Flavor is not God putting money in your bank account. Fla flavor is not God making sure you got a lit car. Amen. Flavor is not God making sure you go on either crew, Caribbean or Royal Caribbean. Amen. Uh, cruise, celebrity cruise, whoever. That's not flavor. You know what flavor is? Flavor is God can tell you well done. Yes. That yes. good and faithful servant. What's flavor? Flavor is having my sins forgiven. Yeah. What's flavor? Flavor is being able to say, I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Yes. You want that flavor? Yeah. You have to come to Christ to get that flavor. Mm -hmm. To get your sins forgiven, you got to come to Christ. That's where that flavor is. The flavor is in Christ. How do I come to Christ? I hear his gospel. That he died, that he was buried, that he rose again to die no more. And then I've got to believe that gospel message. I'm going to believe it so much that I'm going to make a point today. Not tomorrow. Not Tuesday. Not Wednesday. Not next week. Not next month. Right now. I'm determined to turn my life around today. Somebody might say, well, i got to get my life together. You can't get your life together without Christ. Amen. It's impossible. But you got to start with him today. Will it be perfect every day moving forward? No. You're going to have some struggles. You're going to have some hills. You're going to have some valleys. You're going to have some nights where the old you wants to be resuscitated. But as long as you just keep trusting in Jesus, those midnights turn into midday full of dancing. So if you repent of it and confess faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, and then be baptized. Why do I have to be baptized, Brother Brandon? Because that's the only way you can get into the kingdom. Let everybody else tell you that baptism is not optional. Listen to Jesus. Amen. Jesus said in John 3, 5, except a man be born of water and 
and spirit. Now watch, you have theologians trying to tell you that water and spirit are all symbolically the Holy Spirit. Well, God is not dumb. God is extremely intelligent. If he said water and spirit, he differentiated between the two. Amen. Amen. Meaning there has to be water and there has to be a change of spirit. Yeah. Or else he would have just left it like he said it in John 3, 3. Mm -hmm. Except a man be born again. Mm -hmm. He cannot enter into the kingdom. John 3, 5 says except a man be born of water and of spirit. God knows what he's doing. That's why your Bible says that God be true and every man alive. Amen. Don't even trust me. Read your book and you will come to the conclusion you need to be born again. And if you're willing, if you're ready, clothing is here, baptizing is here, the water should be now cool. We don't want warm water now, it's getting hot. Amen. 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 I run around, I don't know, mess up my hair. We got wave caps and wig caps. <laughs> I need towels. We got multiple towels. Yeah. Well, brother, you might not have my size. We got multiple sizes. Yeah. 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 There is nothing that's going to hinder you today. Yeah. All things are ready. Will you come as together we stand here, word of memory? I am a part.